Hi, in this video I'm going to talk about how to deal with optimization problems where you have a function of more than one variable. Since I'm not good at sketching in 3D, I've got my function of two variables over here, which is a surface. Uh, any function of two variables, continuous function of two variables, makes you a surface if you try and plot it. So when I talk about functions of three of two variables, I'm usually going to talk in the terms of z is, e is a function of x and y. So this one would be my z-axis. I can never remember how MATLAB does it, but let's say this one is x and this one's y. So for every value of x and y, you have a unique z-value. Obviously, in this function of x and y, there's a local maximum right here and a local minimum right here. And we want to know how to find those without having to plot our functions all the time. So in a kind of straightforward extension of how you optimize single variable functions, the critical points of a function of two variables, so let's say my function z is some function of x and y, the critical points happen when the derivative with respect to x is 0 and the derivative with respect to y is also 0. So what does that really mean? So I've got three example surfaces down here that I stole from MATLAB. So on this one over here, just imagine that these two black lines on the bottom, those are my x and y axes. So if you look at this function, if you take a, if you just cut it vertically at the x-axis, it's shaped like a parabola. And if you cut it ver vertically along the y-axis, it also looks like a parabola. So at this local minimum down here, the derivative with respect to x is the derivative of this parabola in the x direction, and it's going to be 0 right at the local minimum. Similarly, the derivative with respect to y is going to be 0 at this local minimum. Same thing with this little local maximum here. The derivative in the x direction is flat, is equal to 0, and in the y direction it's also equal to 0. And over here, this is a third kind of critical point that can happen that's uh, the equivalent of boring inflection points. Now, this is a saddle point, so named because this really obviously looks like a saddle if you've ever been near a horse. So if you look at the contours of this, this one, right, let's say this is the y direction and this is the x direction. So if you take a slice through x, it's a parabola facing down concave down, and if you look in the direction of y, it's a parabola concave up. So at this point here, this green point, the derivative with respect to y is going to be 0, and the derivative with respect to x is also going to be 0, because we're at the center point of the parabola. But that's neither a local maximum nor a local minimum. So obviously we need more than just the first partial derivatives of our function in order to find to characterize critical points for two variable functions. So you've probably guessed that there's going to be some sort of second derivative test, or second partial derivative test, really, because this is a two variable function. But what should the conditions on the second derivatives be, and which ones should we use, and how? So let's say I've got my now, even after I said I wasn't going to do it, I'm going to try drawing. This is my three-dimensional parabolic surface, like the ones on the other side. Actually, I'm going to draw this one in blue. I'm going to call this blue slice. Oops, that shouldn't be. So pretend the blue parabola is a contour in the direction of y, and the black line is a contour in the direction of x. Anyway, 
let's think about what's going on at this minimum point here. So z is some function of x and y. It's obvious that zz by dx is equal to 0 and dz by I'm using the wrong notation. dz by dy is equal to 0 and dz by dx is also equal to 0. What's the partial derivative with respect to x doing here? Well, let's arbitrarily say this is the left of my point and this is the right of my point. So to the left of the point the partial derivative with respect to x is decreasing and on the other side it's increasing which means that at the time that it goes through the point the derivative with respect to x is increasing which means the second derivative with respect to x is positive which is d squared z respect to dx squared or sometimes it's written as f x x the second derivative with respect to x of x and y is greater than zero. Same thing for y, right? To the left of the critical point, to the left of the critical point, the partial derivative is decreasing. On the right, it's increasing, which means it's going from a negative to positive, so it's increasing, which means the second derivative as it goes through the critical point is going to be greater than zero. That's what happens at a local minimum. And for a local maximum, it's the same but opposite, right? The second derivative will be negative for each one of these. But what about at a saddle point? So at a saddle point, Right, both dz by dy and dz by dx are equal to zero. The second derivative of y, second derivative with respect to y, sorry, well, is decreasing on the left and increasing on the right. So that's going to be greater than zero, just like this local minimum over here. But for y, this other one, or with for x, sorry, this one's x, this one's y. The second derivative with respect, second partial derivative with respect to x is going to be less than zero because it's concave down here. So the fundamental difference between a local minimum or maximum, an interesting critical point, and a saddle point, which is not useful as an optimum point, is that the sign of the second derivatives with respect to y and with respect to x, they have the same sign for optimum points, and they have different signs for saddle points. And that information gets combined into the actual second derivative rule I'm about to show you. So now that we sort of intuitive, intuitively figured out what it's going to be, z is some function of x and y, and we already know that the partial derivatives are both, the first partial derivatives are both zero, so it's a critical point. To determine whether it's a critical, whether it's a minimum, a maximum, or a saddle, first we define another, a new quantity called d, say, and it is the partial derivative the second partial derivative with respect to x at the point multiplied by the second partial derivative with respect to y at the point minus this weird partial derivative with respect to x and y squared. So this one is a little bit odd. You might not have encountered one of these before. So f double x is first you take the derivative with respect to x and then you take the derivative with respect to x again. For this one, 
you take the partial derivative with respect to x, and then you take the partial derivative of that with respect to y. If z was equal to x squared minus 2y, first partial derivative is going to be 2x, and then the partial derivative of that with respect to y is going to be 0, because there's no, no y's there, right? Like that. Right. And all d is really telling you, there's a complicated uh, proof of this that I'm not giving you, that's why I did all that drawing and intuiting before. But what d tells you, right, we established that for interesting points, for minima and maxima, f double x and f double y are going to have the same sign, so this number will be positive. And if the second partial derivatives with respect to x and y have different signs, this value is going to be negative. So, so the rule has two parts. If d is greater than 0, that means they had the same sign, so it's a max or a minimum. So if d is greater than 0 and they have the same sign, then you look at them and see what sign that is. So you just say f double x. If it's greater than 0, that means it's a minimum. And if f double x is less than 0, that means it's a maximum. If d is negative, that's a saddle point, and it's boring. <laughs>